Oof, what a bad start for the winter 2023 anime season. Yes, we have kicked things off. It is officially started. Well, technically it started, I think, on January 1st with Way the House Husband, but for simulcast, <laughs> yes. Ningen Fushin, adventurers who don't believe in humanity will save the world, world, world. Or actually the better title being Apparently Disillusioned Adventurers Will Save the World, which is a series that is airing in the winter 2023 anime season, being done by Geek Toys and streaming on Crunchyroll, based on a light novel. Honestly, I had a little bit of promise in this series when I seen the PV for it. And honestly, it can still kind of correct itself, but just based on the first episode of the series, which is my first impressions of it, I'm not too sure about it. <laughs> just based on the writing in the first episode. But this is my first impressions on the series, so let's jump right into it. Ningen Fushin opens up with a guy named Nick, who is an adventurer and his life is going well, but similar to many shows anymore. <laughs> yes, he gets kicked out of the party. But not only that, but also the girl that he was going out with broke up with him. Apparently she has been tricking him the entire time. She's getting him to get her something and then she broke up with him. So he's not too happy. And then it quickly jumps to the fact that he suddenly becomes an idol fan, which yes, this is a fantasy world with adventure guilds and magic and everything, but also apparently idols from Japan. So maybe this is part isekai. I don't know yet. They also had business suits in it at some point. But yes, he becomes an idol fan of this girl named Agate. Well, like most idol fans, he needs money to support his idol, so he needs to get a job. And this quickly leads to him going to the Venture Guild to see if he can get another party. But he's got a lot of insecurities now because essentially the group that he got kicked out of, the leader, it was somebody that he looked up to, like a father. So having this father figure basically tell him that he's not cut out to be an adventurer, it's a little bit dis disheartening for him. But eventually he goes to a pub to kind of drink away his worries. And since there's not many other tables available, he gets stuck with three other people. Tiana, a mage, Zem, a cleric, and Kuron, a dragonkin warrior. And essentially what we get here is the three of them all yell at the same time how they cannot trust anybody. And they all drink their drinks at the same time. And essentially through kind of a sort of semi-drunken stupor, each one of them essentially tells their story. So yeah, essentially the entire first episode is backstories of each one of these individuals. Yes, we already got Nick's story that he got kicked out of this party, pretty much talked down to by his father figure and again, broken up with. Tiana the mage, she's actually this girl that's seeking knowledge. She's very skilled in magic. She's been trying really hard. And yes, recently she's gained the ability to use multiple elements, which is incredible. Well, as she goes back to tell her fiance, Alex, that she was able to pull this off, he starts spewing the fact that yeah, Apparently this girl sitting next to me, she told me that you bullied her, even though now she's technically talking about how she's just like people told her. But yeah, because Alex feels like she's looking down upon him and she's always thinking about herself, he wants to break up her marriage. And it also seems as if Tiana's father kicks her out as well because she ends up going traveling. From the cleric Zim's perspective, this is where, <laughs> I'm already kind of rough with this show. And this is where it starts to go downhill a lot more. As Zim is a cleric, he's taking care of this one village and this one little girl, takes a very strong interest in him. Even still, she tries to confess to him and he says, you know, look, I'm a man of the cloth. I can't have relationships. Apparently she took this and went off and told everybody that he did something to her, <laughs> that he was paying her for her body. And everybody apparently took her word for it. And so they locked him up for three months. As for Kuren, the dragonkin, about all she said is that somebody that she really appreciated took something very special from her, which we don't know if that's an item or you know, something else. It just kind of showed us a brief shot of her reaching out to a group of people that are walking away from her. Well, they kind of have fun and then eventually the next day they wake up and they're all inside of Tiana's room and she kicks him out. And then that's the point which Nick says, hey, we all have the same issue going on. We can't trust anybody anymore. So let's make a party. And then it cuts to a spoiler from the narrator saying that these people will save the world. But that's a story for a long time, which is, yes, probably the end of the light novel. I don't know. So yes, um... <laughs> This show, to be perfectly honest, when I read the synopsis for this series before the series start, I thought, oh, another kicked out of the heroes party story. This is probably gonna be another throwaway show. But then again, I seen the PB and the PB showed me a bit of promise. This idea of the band of the misfits, the, the, the dropouts, the kickouts that all come together to achieve something. And I was kind of hoping that a shred of truth in their being kicked out of their party or whatever would have still held true so that you would still have kind of a quirk between these individuals. But unfortunately, the only one that we really get a sense of that is maybe Nick and maybe Tiana. The leader of Nick's party told him that he talks down to people despite the fact of him being still a kid. 
And so there's a part of me that kind of wonders if he will be like that. Will he have to catch himself from talking down to other people as if he's some sort of authority figure? Again, Tiana almost also has a sense of this. Whereas after she gets kind of, again, broken up from her fiance and again, it's seemingly kicked out of her own home, she sort of points out that maybe they're right, that maybe the only person that I'm looking at is myself. It seems like her journey to becoming a great wizard is this idea that she wants knowledge. She doesn't want power. She feels like magic is the best way to understand humanity and the world. So she's a wisdom seeker. But I think there's a chance that she might see that eventually yeah, I'm, I suck at communicating to people. I mean, you get that sense when she's trying to find other party members. She doesn't look, she doesn't have a smile. She always gives a nasty look. Even Nick himself says that she has an aura about her like an assassin. So again, maybe her attitude will be partly her own fault of why she gets disillusioned. Zim, yes, you could probably argue it's because he was so open to other people that he let himself open to an issue. And yes, he sort of, after this whole situation, after his imprisonment, eventually gains a strong interest in women. Even though he's a man of the cloth, which he's not supposed to be around women, after everything happened, it seems like, eh, I'll just get with women. So he can technically be his own downfall. Kuran, we don't know. It, it seems like it just once, I think what they're doing with Kuran is they're going to keep her backstory a secret. Like she's gonna have something that's gonna get into later on. Maybe they felt like they couldn't get it all in at this beginning moment, but still. My issues for this series really stems from a bad first impression. And yes, like I said before, this could get better. The show could get better, but the problem that I'm having right now, and it's the only reason I'm doing an impressions on a single episode. Typically, if I don't get a full sense of it, I'm gonna wait. And this series definitely feel like it was trying to get everybody's story into this first episode so that we can then get into the partying and, and getting out there and fighting stuff. But the backstories are technically important. And every single one of them felt so blah. <laughs> every one of them has cackling bad guy syndrome and it sucks. Like everybody's got some backstory where somebody gets grinny faced and stupid about things. With Nick, her his father figure basically kicks him out, says he's selfish. And then cackling bad guy girlfriend, Tiana, this Alex guy and his stupid derpy face as he's talking about how she's so selfish. And, and yes, I believe everything this girl tells me that you've been bullying her the entire time, even though she says that she just basically met you. And then Zim's the worst. Zim is the worst story <laughs> because it's all about how some girl fell madly in love with him. And then there's two issues there, obviously. One, that he's a man of the cloth and he can't have relationships. But additionally, the fact that, yeah, she's really young. And then we have this whole thing where he, they, she, apparently she run off to the other uh, clerics and said, oh, he did something to me and he was paying me for my body or something like that. And they all go, okay, immediately go there. It feels extremely forced. Like, it feels like this writer didn't want to do anything decently complicated with these stories. They're very simple, dumb stories. He didn't want me. I'm madly in love with him, so now I'm going to destroy his entire life. And then even three months later, I'm still mad at him. Typically don't have that with somebody that's in love with somebody. That's not typically the direction you take that I'm going to destroy his entire... I'm going to make my, my soul living choice to destroy this guy's life. And then even at that... Yes, technically in medieval times, they had way of, ways of checking the stuff. It just feels extru it just feels like they're just trying to force everybody to hate the world. And there's not much thought put into these stories. I think the only one, maybe Tiana seemed like it had the most kind of complexity to it because you do have the fact that she's learning, she has a goal, she's gaining experience, she's achieving things and thus people believe that she's Yes, seducing the teachers, and there's an aspect of inferiority to Alex himself, and rumor spreading. She's lost everything, and again, she almost blames herself because she acknowledges her own faults. The other issue that I had with this first episode was really around almost a clash in styles. It's almost as if this world itself is trying to shove modern time stuff in it. Like, the, the idol stuff was a massive clash of styles. Like, why suddenly do we have, again, modern times idol outfit and lights and glowy sticks in the middle of a fantasy world? Yeah, everything else is still fantasy. There's still the outfits and everything, except for the people at the school with Tiana. Suddenly they walk up with business suits on. It's like, why are they? It's almost like we we're, we're this is a full CGI show and they're just throwing assets from a modern times show into it. So I don't know. I Maybe they'll eventually reveal that there's any Sekai element to this world or something, but... Did we have to have modern times idols in here? Could we just not have just a 
I don't know, a bard, a songtrist or something like that in there. All of my issues aside, I still want to say I have some hope in this series. I still think that this show can do some really cool stuff. Again, it's all going to rely on the fact of can these characters have actual flaws about themselves, maybe acknowledge those flaws, maybe tie those flaws in with their own downfall, but still come together with those flaws to create a little bit of chemistry for them to achieve things. Quentin already seems like she's kind of a little bit klutzy, but yet strong. She's a hardened warrior, but a wounded one. Zim technically being of the cloth, but seemingly breaking away from the traditions of it. Tiana and her skill, but her inability to associate with people. And then yes, like I said earlier, Nick and his possibility of talking down to other people, maybe having to correct his way of essentially working with others. It has potential. It doesn't look the greatest. I think it's, it's got a style to it and I don't really expect too much from Geek Toys. Honestly, Geek Toys has fumbled a lot, but hopefully now that we've gotten the cackling bad guy backstories out of the way, we can focus on hopefully good chemistry and writing going forward. But again, they've set the bar really low, but we'll see. But that's my thoughts. My first impressions of Ningen Fushin adventures who don't believe in humanity will save the world or disillusioned adventures will save the world. Please, Crunchyroll, don't do the whole half Japanese, half English thing. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure that like button down below, comment, let me know what's thought of the series so far, if you're gonna be checking it out. If it if it turns itself around and gets some really good story going on, I will, of course, do another video on it. But for now, that's my thoughts. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button to get on my content. I do news reviews, first impressions, top list. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, yes, I'll be doing first impressions of all the shows of the season between one to three episodes, depending on when I can kind of get a good talking point in there and an idea or sense of the show itself. This will kind of help a lot of people because again, we're technically breaking 70 shows in the winter 2023 anime season. Additionally, if you like my content and you want to support the channel more, we have a Patreon link, a tips link, and a super thanks button down below. We also have a membership button where you can join the channel. I greatly appreciate everybody that supports and y'all take care.